so much more. So much more. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. We worship you today, dear God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's welcome those that are with us online today. Woo, it's been a good morning so far, folks, and we are glad that you have joined us here at First Baptist Church Woodlawn to worship the Lord, to pray. We've had some great ministry time already today as well, and just know that you are welcome to worship with us every Sunday morning, 9 a.m. for Sunday school. We have a meet and greet at 10, and our worship service begins at 1030, and we are glad that you are, are with us today. We hope that you are blessed and that the Lord is using you and speaking to you in your lives today. We continue with the names of God, part four today in our series, and today we're going to look at Jehovah Shalom. The Lord is peace, and I'm going to let you all be seated again. I've been standing a lot today, and I want to say thank you to my good buddy of about 40 years or so, Tim Halbin, for coming and, and helping us out today. Amen. <clears throat> We've been friends for a long time. We've done music together for a long time and ministry together for a long time. And, and he's willing to jump in at any time. And so I appreciate not only his talent, but his, his heart, his heart for God. So whew, can I have just a second? <clears throat> it's a wonderful day today. And sometimes we, we just really need to slow the roll a little bit, you know, and as we transition from, uh, from one to the next. And I, and I feel like that, that God, is, God is here in a, in a special way to, to, to do something. And so I, I don't want to miss that. Amen. I don't want to just rush into something else and, and miss out on, on something that, that God is doing that's, that's very special. So uh, I'm going to ask you to just to, to tune in, to tune in to what the Holy Spirit may be doing, what he might be saying to you, because I believe, once again, that as we learn the names of God, we have to come to a place where we understand how powerful that is. It's powerful to address God specifically by his names because there are many of them according to his character. And today we're gonna look at the, the name of, of God, Jehovah Shalom. You've heard, that, you've heard that word. You've heard shalom all of your life and you probably know that it means peace. The Lord is peace and if you were to uh, come upon a, a Jewish person, there's a good chance that they may say shalom to you. And when you part from a Jewish person, they may also at that point say shalom to you. It's not just a hi, how you're doing. It's very deep. It's a greeting of, uh, I, I wish, I'm already getting off track, but it's a greeting uh, of, of, of wellness, of wholeness, of completeness. And it's, it's very powerful in its, in its meaning. And so I, I hope you have your Bibles today. I'm going to ask you to turn to the book of Judges. Uh, it's in the Old Testament, uh, not far from the beginning. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. And then Judges is, is not far from there. And I'm going to ask you to keep your finger there. Ju Judges chapter 6. We're going to look at verses 23 and 24 to begin with, and we're also going to look at a verse in chapter 2 of Luke uh, as well. But I want you to keep your finger in Judges because we will be going back there again. Judges 6, 23 and 24. But the Lord said to him, Peace be to you. Do not fear. You shall not die. Then Gideon built an altar there to the Lord and called it, the Lord is peace. And to this day, it is still standing Ophrah, which belongs to the Abizurites. And we'll also look at Luke chapter 2, verse 14. And this is the announcement, the proclamation at the birth of Jesus. The angels say, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace among those with whom he is pleased. 
And Lord, I, I pray that that expectation that you have placed upon me this morning, uh, I pray that um, you will speak through me with clarity the word of God and that it will be received with open eyes and ears, that the, the work that you have, have are, are desire, desiring to do, the work that you are doing, we pray in the name of Jesus that it would continue and that it would be completed until the day of Christ. Have your way in Jesus' name, amen. Well, at the birth of Jesus, the heavenly host broke into song proclaiming the, the wonderful news that peace with God was now available. At the close of, of the 60s, I believe it was June of 1969, that John Lennon and Yoko Ono wrote, Give Peace a Chance. And it was written as an anti-war message. And during years of war and, and political unrest, peace, the, the word peace, was always used as a, 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 a signal to end hostility and violence. And the truth of the matter is, is, since the fall of Adam and Eve, there has never been an end to hostility and violence. It's always been man against man, nation against nation nation and until Jesus comes again to restore all things to make all things new there will always be political unrest and hostility and in our country there exists maybe the greatest political divide now more than any other time in our lifetimes who knows and possibly since the country was founded. And I know that's a pretty strong statement. You can go back to the Civil War. You could go back to the late 60s when there was great divide and, and unrest. But the Civil War, the political Civil War that is, that is going on, it's, it's perpetuated and intensified mainly by social media. And people on both sides say... Just, you know, just chill out. Believe as, as we do, and everything will be great. And I really am surprised that with all the friendly political opinions expressed on Facebook that we don't just all get along. I'm just, I don't understand why, why we haven't seen that yet. You know, because it's so friendly. It's just a place that we love to go and we can express ourselves without being attacked. And I just, I just, I just don't know one big happy family but the peace for which John and Yoko led the charge and for most of the flower power hippies of the Woodstock era that peace is not the peace the angels proclaimed to all men at the birth of Jesus Christ John and Yoko wanted a truce they wanted for people and nations to stop fighting against each other. That's the peace that they longed for. They were looking for a world without violence and without unrest. And that would be great. That would be a great world in which to live, but it's not going to happen. Why? Because mankind is evil in nature. Not good. Don't buy into the lie that man is basically good because we are not. Paul, the Apostle Paul said, there is nothing good in me. So don't buy into the lie that people mainly are, are basically good because we are not. Without the peace of God through Jesus Christ, men and nations will always want to conquer other men and other nations. It'll never stop. Mankind wants a truce. The God is peace. And the Hebrew word for peace is shalom. And like most Hebrew words, there are many facets 
to that word. You just can't pigeonhole the word shalom with one English word. There is no single word in the English language to convey the depth and the riches, richness of shalom. But we can, we can look at some synonyms that might help us get a clearer picture of its, of its true meaning. And the general meaning behind shalom, we talked about it a little bit, is wholeness. When somebody says shalom to you, they're wishing upon you wholeness, well-being, completeness, fulfillment, or words that also fit. They fall short, but they, but they fit. And when the angelic host proclaimed and on earth, peace among men with whom he is pleased. At the birth of Jesus, it wasn't the end of earthly violence and hostility they were proclaiming. They weren't proclaiming a truce. The proclamation of, of peace or, or shalom was that through the birth of Christ, and ultimately, his death and his resurrection, that restoration with God was now a reality. Completion, restoration, fulfillment with God was now available through Christ. Man cries for harmony with mankind. That God offers himself through Jesus Christ as our wholeness. He offers himself to us as our completeness. And he offers himself to us as our fulfillment. And because of sin, through Adam and Eve, the Apostle Paul says we were enemies of God. Pretty strong. Why are we enemies of God? Sin. Jesus became sin on the cross, right? He hung on the cross, paying the penalty for our sin. He became sin so that he may take the full wrath of God in, in punishment. Jesus did that, became sin. And what happened? God turned his back on his only son. Why? Because he can't look at sin. He can't be a part of sin. Sin is the enemy of God. Listen to Romans 5, 9 through 11. I think I have this here for you as well. Romans 5, 9 through 11. Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation, completeness, wholeness. And the first time we see the Lord as shalom is in the, the book of Judges and the story of Gideon. So if you have your Bibles, go to chapter 6 of Judges. We'll be there for a little bit here. And verse 1 says, Judges 6, verse 1 says, The people of Israel did what is evil in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord gave them into the hand of Midian seven years. Midian represents strife. The, the Midianites horribly oppressed the Israelites. There was no peace. The Israelites left their homes and they lived in holes in the ground and, and feared for their very lives because of the Midianites. And they were falling to pieces. Verse five says that the Midianites came at them like locusts and laid waste to the land. And verse six, and Israel was brought very low because of Midian. God's people were stressed out, living in fear. Does that sound familiar? Is that, is that times of, of your life, seasons of your life where oh, 
you get stressed out. Fear comes over you, uncertainty. But the second part of verse six brings the, the beginning of restoration. And the, and the people of Israel cried out for help to the Lord. After seven years, they finally cried out to the Lord for help, and that sounds like us too. As long as we think we have it all under our own control, God will allow the the Midianites in our lives, he will allow the devil to stress us out, to live in constant fear and uncertainty. So, what God does, God sends an unnamed prophet to remind them that God expects total obedience. Look at verse 10. And I said to you, I am the Lord your God. You shall not fear the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell, but you have not obeyed my voice. So, in all of this, where was Gideon? Well, he too was in hiding, working in an underground wine press, because he also was discouraged and defeated because of the Midianites. Verse 11, now an angel of the Lord came and sat down, and while Gideon was beating out the the wheat in the wine press to hide it from the Midianites. And verse 12, the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, the Lord is O mighty man of valor. Really? Really, God? Uh, I'm, in, I'm in hiding, I'm fearful for my life, I'm a chicken, and you call me a mighty man of valor? So often, God sees us much differently than we see ourselves. <laughs> he sees us how we are made, in his image. We look at ourselves with with our limitations and our our shortcomings. So Gideon, then he proceeds to complain to the Lord. He says, well, Lord, if you're with us, why is all this bad stuff happening to us? Heard those words before from my own mouth. And how come, Lord, we don't see all the miracles you did for our fathers? Talking about the Red Sea and all the miracles that God did. How come we don't see those? But Lord, you have forsaken us and given us to the Midianites. Now, you might expect a rebuke to come from God. (laughs) You've seen it before in Scripture. At at complaining to God. But in this instance, this is not what God does. Verse 14. And the Lord turned to him. And that's, those four words are, are huge. And the Lord turned to him and said, go, in this might of yours, talking about God being his might. Go in this might and save Israel from the hand of Midian. Am I not sending you? And as so many times we see in Scripture, especially the Old Old Testament, when God has his messenger, he has the one that he's setting apart, that he's calling, there's there's hesitation. And Gideon kind of gets all Moses with God and says, I'm not the one. I'm the weakest in the land. I'm the least in my father's house. In verse 16, God says, but I will be with you and you shall strike the Midianites as one man. Wow, didn't we just read just a little bit ago how powerful and and oppressive the Midianites were? 
How the whole land of Israel was, was oppressed and they were in hiding and fear because of the, the power of the Midianites. They ravaged the land and stress was so intense that they hid underground. But what we see is, is God in his love and his mercy. He turns toward Gideon. I want you to see that. I have, that's a whole sermon right there. God turned towards Midian. And he says, I am with you. Go in this power and save Israel from the enemy because I am sending you to do it. So what does Gideon do? He runs in the house. He prepares bread and and a goat as a sacrifice to the Lord. And the angel of God tells him to put the bread and the meat on a rock and to pour broth over it. And the angel of God touched the meat and the bread with the tip of a staff and fire sprang up from the rock and consumed the meat and the bread. And the angel vanished. Verse 22. Then Gideon perceived. (laughs) Some more powerful words for you right there. Then Gideon perceived. His eyes were opened. His mind was changed. His complaining turned to confession and worship. And he says, alas, oh, Lord God, for now I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. In verse 23, but the Lord said to him, peace be to you. Do not fear, you shall not die. The words, you shall not die, coming from God himself, brought comfort and assurance to Gideon. If if, if we can, let's put ourselves in in their place, in their shoes for just a little bit. Remember, maybe just the day before, a couple days before, they were running for their lives. They were in hiding. They were oppressed. They were in fear. And now the words from God himself come. Do not fear. You shall not die. It's like one of those, just a big exhale. When you realize that everything is okay. Gideon and the Israelites had not known peace for for many years. And those words from God himself, you shall not die, brought joy unspeakable. In worship, Gideon's response was to build an altar to remember the occasion forever. They did this a lot in the Old Testament. They built a memorial. They built an altar for future generations, what God did at that place many times. We should do that more often. We should do that to remember what God has done. Gideon built an altar to remember the occasion forever. And he built this altar and he named it, The Lord is Peace. And the the story of of Gideon continues in in Judges uh, chapter seven and eight. And I, I really do encourage you to take what we've Spoken today and read chapter 7 and 8. Read that for yourself so you can continue to see the work that God did. But God could have shamed and punished Gideon. But instead, he revealed himself as Shalom. He revealed himself to Gideon as, as, as wholeness, as wellness. That's peace. And scripture said that he perceived that he had been in the presence of God. And he made a memorial to the Lord is peace, Jehovah Shalom. The significance of Shalom 
is that he brings wholeness. He brings completion, harmony to, to our whole being. It's inside, it's outside. It's a quietness in our soul, a stillness. And with that comes the security of knowing the God of peace. How many of you, don't raise your hands unless you want to, how many of you would love that inner stillness? How many of you would love that that outer calm that comes from perceiving that you have been in the presence of God? I long for that every day. Not always successful. Because Midian comes at me often. I'm sure as Midian comes against you. It happens. But God, in his love and in his mercy, he turns towards us and says, do not fear. I am with you. In Christ, in Jesus Christ, Jehovah Shalom is yours. He is yours. You don't have to ask for it because in Christ, he is yours. So walk in it. Walk in it. Live in it. And let it change your point of view. And God would say to us in this power, go and defeat the Midianites in your own life, the stress makers, the the oppressors, the joy stealers. They are defeated through Jehovah Shalom. Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your, again, for your promise. for your great love towards us, your mercy that turns towards us to say I love you, to say I am with you. Mm. Lord, I pray that there would be a perceiving this morning. I pray that there would be eyes open this morning that we have been in the presence of of Jehovah Shalom. And that those who are, who are born again, who are child of God, that they feel like they're missing out on this stillness, this wholeness, this completion, this fulfillment, Lord, that they will perceive that they are in the presence of God. And they will thank you for it. They will worship you. Lord, let... Jehovah Shalom. Rule and reign in in our lives. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.